So our next presenter is one of my colleagues, Gurav Dadhania, whose name I always mispronounce. Um, he works at Common Code in Melbourne, uh, and he thinks he speaks fluent Python and JavaScript. Today he's going to be teaching us about parcel tongue. Uh, please, wa please welcome Gurev. Thank you. Um, hi everyone. Um, today we're going to be learning parcel tongue, and we're going to try and be wizards. But um, as any of you who are Harry Potter fans would know, parcel tongue is the language of serpents. It goes something like. Something like that. But unfortunately, wizards don't exist in our world, and um, the language of serpents is kind of useless. But considering Python is sort of a serpent, we'll do cool stuff in Python. So what we're going to do today is learn about magic methods and a bit of introduction on metaprogramming in Python. So what are magic methods? They're usually surrounded by double underscores on both sides, and they're supposed to add a bit of magic into your classes. They're not re really magical, but they are still quite cool. They're also sometimes called special methods, because they allow you, the programmer, to add your own logic to how things work. We definitely need to cover all of this. So let's start with the basic um, magic methods. New, which is used for uh, creating a new instance. Um, it's, it's useful for when you run a um, subclass immutable types, and we'll see an example in a, just a second. And this is the first thing that call, gets called when you create like a new instance of a class. The next thing that gets called typically is init, which is supposed to initialize your instance. Um, and similar to how new and init deal with constructing of your instances, Dell deals with destruction. And so you can clean things up usually using Dell. So this is a simple example of using init and del. So you're just using a file object, and you're wrapping your file, keeping like a personal instance of the file, and closing it when you get deleted. Now delete, as you might seem, would you might think that delete gets called when del of the instance is called, but delete at underscore underscore del is called when the instance is actually garbage collected. So you need to be careful there. Um, you can also overload operators, so make your custom objects behave like their native um, built-in types in Python. So something like instance one equals equals instance two instead of instance one dot equals instance two, which allows your code to be more readable and beautiful. Um, so how do you overload operators? There's comp, which ha which deals with comparison of instances. Um, it's a method that you can define that returns a positive int integer if the current instance is greater than, if you want the current instance to be greater than the instance you're comparing it with, return zero if you think it's going to be equal, and return a negative integer if you think it's less than. This has been removed in Python 3 because it sounds confusing, and so you can use the other, um, I'm sorry, this resolution's kind of corrupt, but you can use the other um, magic methods to actually compare stuff. Um, as you can see, equals, not equals, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than, equal to. And they all overload the corresponding operators. Now, you don't actually need to define all of them. You can just define underscore, underscore, equal, and underscore, underscore, less than, or greater than, and then Python can figure out um, how things are working. So you can use the total ordering decorator from Funk Tools module to achieve the exact result. In this example, we're using Word, but we're changing its comparison operators so that we're actually comparing the length of words instead of the actual ASCII values. You can also overload unary operators, so you can uh, o overload all of these objects when the object is supposed to be positive, negative, absolute value, the inverse of some object, so this is binary inversion. Um, you want to round it, floor it, seal it, or truncate the decimal values. Um, all of this you can define and you can have custom um, logic for any of these function calls. Then you can overload the arithmetic operators. All of, all of them can be overloaded to your custom logic and uh, it's just the list of these things that you can actually use to define your custom logic. 
Now reflect that arithmetic operators. Let's say you use a custom uh, arithmetic operator, but the first object doesn't actually define uh, the magic method for the compare for that operator, or it raises a not implemented exception, then the other object's reflected arithmetic magic method gets called. So our add would get called if my object doesn't have an underscore underscore add, or it's underscore underscore add raises a non-implemented method. Augmented assignment is just the operators that use the instance itself, and you can use the list of these um, methods to actually provide custom logic for augmented uh, assignment. Similarly, there are methods for type conversion as well. Coerce is it's removed in Python 3 because it's kind of confusing. It's used for when you are dealing with different instances and you're trying to coerce them while you're doing arithmetic operations on those instances. Everything else is pretty much self-explanatory, so I'm going to whiz through them. Representation is another thing where you can um, define how the representation of your instance is going to be. Um, bit of a difference between underscore underscore SDR and underscore underscore REPRE -E representation is REPR -E is intended for machines, whereas SDR is intended for Unicode. Um, size of and there, the, there you should only be concerned with them if you're writing um, C extensions. Attribute access. This is where things get really good. Um, this get, adder, get attribute is called when the attribute doesn't exist, and so you can do fun stuff with it. Set attribute is called whenever you want to set an attribute on the instance. Delete attribute similarly is called when del is called on the attribute. Get attribute is for new, new style classes where it's called regardless of whether the attribute exists or not. So if you want to handle any attribute access, then you can ov override the get attribute method. Now you have to be careful when using get attribute because things can get tricky. It can cause infinite recursion like this, so self.name equals value, but that self.name will again call set attribute, so it's just going to keep on recursing infinitely. And we can call, we can negate that by just not setting the attribute on the instance itself, but just changing a value of one of its, in, uh, one of its uh, attributes. To make custom sequences, you need to follow a certain protocol. Um, protocol in Python, it seems a bit like an interface. So to make an immutable container, you need to define length and get item. To make a mutable container, you need to define set item and delete item in in addition to length and get item. To make the container iterable, you need to define underscore underscore iter, um, which, which should, and the iterator itself, you can define a custom iterator which should return itself when underscore underscore iter is called and define a next method. Python protocols are quite informal and there's no explicit declarations for something to be a protocol, it's just a convention. So these are the, the magic methods that you can use to create custom containers, like strings or types. Here, you should take proper care that you're raising the proper exceptions, like um, key error should be used when the key is missing and needed, and type error should be used when the key is not compatible with your instance type. You can also use magic methods to override the default method for reflection, so you can write instance check and subclass check to, to override the however your instances are checked and however your subclasses are checked. Callable objects. Functions are, are first class objects in Python, so your classes can also be called and passed in arguments. So you can override underscore underscore call and whenever the, the instance is called with any arguments, it'll go to call and you can provide your any, any statefulness or any logic in there. Context managers allow, they're used for a pattern where you need definite steps for setup and definite steps for cleaning up. Um, they're usually used in a with statement in Python. So you can define enter and exit magic methods for when the block, the with block starts and when the with block exits. Um, in exit, you need to take care that if you're handling any exceptions, you need to return true. 
Otherwise, you could just do general cleanup. So this is an example of a context manager where we're just closing connections. So while, when we're entering the context, we're just returning the object. But if it's more specific, you can actually uh, create a new instance of the connection and enter. And in, on exit, we're trying to close the object's connection. And if, if we're handling an exception, if it arises. Um, you can see that if, the, if we're handling the exception, we're returning true. You can also override magic methods for descriptor objects. So here we're using two uh, descriptors for meter and foot. Um, and we're using get and set methods to set and get the values. Python also provides copy and deep copy to provide your own um, custom logic for copying objects and deep copy. Deep copying objects, the difference between copy and deep copy is in copy, it's just a shallow copy, so your data might just be references, whereas in deep copy, it actually goes through your entire data structure and actually copies values around instead of just references. Deep copy going to be quite memory um, uh, and CPU intensive, so it has a memo dict that you need to use to see what nodes of your data structure you've actually visited previously, so you're not actually recursing uh, infinitely while you're copying your data structure. Pickling is serialization for the Python data structures, so um, they can be stored and retrieved later, the data. You can also use these magic methods to actually see how your object is pickled and how it gets stored. This is an example of where we're actually customizing how the object gets pickled. So we're just uh, storing the value and the last change, and then the history dict just keeps a a uh, record of when the value was changed and what it was changed to. But so whenever we're getting state, we're just returning that history dictionary. And whenever we're setting state, so whenever it's unpickled, we're saying keep the history, but the value and the last change are set to none. So after it gets pickled and then unpickled, the slate is clean. The current value will be none, but you'll still have that history of what the values were. Abstract base classes also use the underscore underscore subclass hook magic method that you can use to see if the current uh, an instance of the class is actually a subclass of that abstract base class. But wait, there's more. We're going to go into metaprogramming. Metaprogramming is quite a general term, but what we're going to do right now is understand metaprogramming as programs that manipulate other programs. So think of it as if a person is building a car, he's actually doing manual work. But if he's building a, he's writing, he's building a factory to build cars, then he's sort of programming. And if he's building a factory that builds factories to build cars, he's metaprogramming. Classes in Python are just objects. So you can add a field and add methods, and it'll be passed on to any instance of that class. You can modify them however, however you can modify objects in Python. You can add fields, you can subtract fields. The difference is all of the objects of that class will, even, even the ones that have been instantiated, will be getting those values. What creates these special class objects? Like classes create instances, but what creates classes? These are some special objects called meta classes. The default meta class is something called type. Classes create instances. So class C pass is similar to calling type on C with no, no classes that it actually inherits from and an empty dictionary of attributes. So you can dynamically create classes by calling type and the name of the class, give it a base class of list and a dictionary of an attribute 42 and a function howdy. This class can then create, we can create an instance of this class um, and you can see how Every attribute is still there. It's still uh, inheriting from list. Um, and we just created a class dynamically. Meta classes can be used to create classes. So meta class is just another callable on the class. But it and it should accept the same arguments as type, but it's used to create classes. By, by convention, meta classes, the first argument is always the class value. However, like. It, you can see in, in classes, our 
methods usually get the first argument of the instance, but in meta classes, our first argument is the class, the, the actual class, except underscore underscore new, whose first, first argument is the meta class. So uh, because meta class is just a callable, you can define it as a class or, or as a function within, within your class. This is an example of where we're using a meta class. Um, what it's doing is when, when it's initializing the class, it's seeing if the class, is in, if the class has an attribute registry. If it doesn't, then it adds the class to the class's registry. And then when, when str of that class would be called, it will return the class name followed by all of the, all of the subclasses that are in its registry. You can also create classes that are final. So in this case, when the class gets initialized, you're seeing that if, if the class that's getting initialized is an instance of the class in its basis, then we're not allowing it. So if you, you define one class with this meta class, no other class will be able to inherit from that class. So when we're dealing with meta classes, it's quite confusing when to use underscore underscore new and when to use underscore underscore init. When you're using underscore underscore new, you can change the names, the bases, the namespace of the class that's going to be initialized. But when you're using underscore underscore init, you can't. In new, you have an instance of the meta class that you get. The class isn't actually initialized. Whereas in init, the class has already been initialized and you're doing all of the initialization work. So a meta method can be called from either the meta class or from the class, and an instance method can be called from class or an instance. This is an example of a singleton. So we're writing a meta method call, and it's just saying that if instance is defined, um, we're calling, we're creating, if instance is not defined, we're creating an instance. Otherwise, we're just returning that instance. So only one instance of that class will ever get created. There's also the underscore underscore prepare meta, meta method that you can use to override the dictionary, the, the dic, underscore underscore dict um, attribute of a class to something custom. So you can use, for example, this, where we're using an ordered dictionary instead of a dictionary. So you can define any object there that has a set method, magic method. So you're probably thinking, this is quite cool, and Python provides all of these things for me, but what should I actually do with them? And so I advise you to use the magic. Like, Python actually provides all of these things, and they're actually quite helpful. It'll make sure that your code is more readable. It'll make sure that your code is actually quite clean. But then there's the downside of, it'll actually be quite confusing to someone who's looking at your code for the first time to figure out how it's working if you're using a lot of these features. So I, I, I suggest you have a nice balance of when you're using these techniques and when not. And that's about it. Thanks, Gaurav. Uh, did anyone have any questions about metaprogramming? Up the back. Oh, sweet. Uh, I'll probably tweet out a link to my slides. It's actually, that's the URL. Uh, so it's S L I D E S slash G V R V. Everyone can probably read that. Any other questions? Hi, so with the um, meta class um, programming, is it, I mean, one example where that's used is, in, is Django with um, setting up models. And I just thought it'd be interesting to see if there's any in um, guidelines or examples of, of where meta programming's been useful for you or, you know, existing projects where that's been um, used. There's one library that I've personally read the source of that actually uses it. It's called Django SEO. Um, where it uses uh, meta classes to actually create class instances for the different um, 
um, data items whose meta information you want to generate. So it, let's say you've got products and stores and people. Uh, it actually dynamically generates classes for like product meta, store meta, people meta to track the meta information for it. So if you look at the source for Django SEO, that would be a good, good way to find out. We've got another question up the back here. Uh, hi, um, I was first introduced, I guess, to metaprogramming at PyCon last year, where uh, someone demonstrated to me how to create a um, meta class to create an abstract base class uh, that behaved the way I expected from C++. Uh, I was intrigued if, is there anything that leaps to mind as a particularly like useful or meta class that you wrote that you're, I guess, really pleased with or found, find really useful for yourself personally? I'm sorry, is that um, you're mo looking at like practical applications of meta classes? Uh, yeah, a, pr a practical example that you, you've, how you'd used, I guess, the power of meta class programming uh, for your own benefit. Um, so I, I think there's some things that you can do with meta classes that you can't natively do. So like if we looked at examples of um, creating a singleton and creating final classes, which is not something that's built in, but you can still do it using this. So I, I, I just say experiment, I guess. If you're getting stuck somewhere and just try it. This is more about Python providing that useful functionality. So if you need it, you can do it. But most of us in our day jobs, we're just concatenating strings. So. Uh, thanks, Gurev. Was there any other questions? Looks like that's it, guys. Um, just remember that you need to pick up your dinner ticket if um, you're going to the dinner tonight. Otherwise, you won't be able to get in. So you have to do that at the swag desk. And that's the last talk for in here. So afternoon tea is going to be served out in the foyer here. If you could just leave fairly quietly. Oh, we forgot again. Um, we have some coffee beans and a coffee mug, thanks to um, Ritual Coffee and the PyCon organizers for Gurav. And thanks, Gurav.